Hey there, YouTube world, Matt Schwartz here, The Welding Geek, and on this episode of The Welding Geek, I'm making these right here, the thigh plates for The Mandalorian. I was really happy with how all this came out, especially with this blob thingy on there. I figured how to do that. All weld. <laughs> anyway, if you want to see how I went about making these, stay tuned to the video. All right, we are starting off with my templates as usual. I know a lot of you folks have been asking for the templates and I will be releasing them soon after I am done building all my metal parts for my costume. So just give me some time and I will get those out there. All right, so right now what I'm doing is pasting my uh, templates here on 050 3003 aluminum. I'm going a little thinner this time just with how I'm gonna go about building these templates or these parts. Now that I have my pieces pasted on my aluminum, I'm going to get them sheared out here. I'm going to shear my flats and then take it over to the bandsaw as usual and get my parts all cut out. Right onto the slip roll, which is just a machine that rolls a radius in my flat parts here. And how this works is I'll screw up the bottom die, it will tighten up how far it is away from that top die, and the tighter you make it, the tighter the radius. On to the bead roller. This is gonna roll some beads in my material here. This is why I used 050 so I could get a bigger bead. Um, the thinner the material, the, the, the easier it is to form and the, the higher this bead will be. That's why I chose 050. So you can see the extra material around the bead. I added that extra material just so I could put that bead on here. And now I'm gonna take my tin snips and just cut that off. All right, I gotta trim off the lip off this other one. And as you can tell, there's an extra feature in there that I did not get on camera. And how I put that in there was I used that same beading tool, but I, instead of having the beading dies in it, I had a step die. And I just rolled two steps in there um, to give it that center section feature that you see. All right, to put this other center section on this other plate, I decided to cut out a strip of material and weld it on. And how I'm going to do that is, is I'm going to go ahead and mark out where this needs to be um, and mark some holes and punch out some holes where I can plug weld it from the back side.
All right, it's time to make the backing mounting plates. I'm gonna use some poster board to make some templates and I'm gonna go ahead and get that stuff cut out of aluminum. Right. instead of using a sharpie or a pen I'm gonna use my scribe on these templates because I'd like a nice fine line to try to cut to so they fit nice and tight then it's gonna be basically just rinse and repeat shear bandsaw slip roll and then get them to fit nice and tight to my plates I'm going to use my 3 16 Roper Whitney punch here to punch some, punch four holes, and these are going to be my mounting holes. I'm going to press a PEM stud into these backing plates to use so I can bolt these plates to my flight suit. What a PEM stud is, it's just a press in stud. It just bites into the aluminum and holds tight there, so you don't have to use um, a screwdriver or a wrench to, to tighten anything down. They're pressed now firmly into the aluminum just makes it easier to deal with when uh, trying to mount your plates to your costume. Now that I have my 1032 PIM studs pressed in, I'm gonna go ahead and tack the backers to the front. It's a nice clean fit, tacked up really well. I'm using my standard welding setup on this, which is a 16th inch tungsten, 2% thoriated tungsten, a number seven um, cup with a gas lens, and a 4043 rod, and the aluminum alloy, like I said, is 3003, both the backer plate and the front plate. Alright, it's welding time. Now that I have all my pieces tacked all the way around the edge, it's time to weld all the way around the edge. So some folks might not know what kind of weld process this is. This is called TIG welding. It's different from MIG welding and that you, your torch is not feeding the filler material, your hand is. Um, and you also have a foot pedal, and when you strike the foot pedal, strike snark, 
and it creates a molten puddle and then you add the filler rod to that puddle. It's well blob making time. It's time just to throw a bunch of rod onto this piece here to make a big old weld blob basically. Just a note, when you weld two pieces of material together and there's an air gap in between them, if it's completely sealed, it will blow your weld out completely. A big puff of air will come out and just blow your weld out. So that's why I went in there and took my drill and drilled a hole all the way through there so it could vent. So more or less what I'm trying to accomplish or what I'm doing is drawing with this torch trying to make this blob. Now that I got the blob done, it's time to weld all the way around this other piece. Okay, what I'm going to try to do now is go ahead and put in the blaster hits on this thigh plate. I've drawn about where I think they're going to be and I'm just going to use a hammer and beat them in. Really like how this came out. Can't wait to paint it. Now that everything's welded, it's time to metal finish the parts to make them look like one cohesive part. Get out of here, Bob. Leave me alone. My weld finishing process is using an angle head grinder with an 80 grit um, pad to start just to break the weld all the way down. Then I'm going to come back with a scotch brite pad to smooth everything out and then I'm going to use the DynaBraid tool to really smooth everything out. And I'm going to use the DA at times too. What you're just trying to accomplish is just get rid of the weld and not dig too far deep into the part to relieve the weld all the way out. You still want the weld to be there but you don't want to be, be able to see it. One down, on to the next one.
Okay, sandblasting will be next. I know I never show the sandblasting process, but I don't want to bring my camera over there and get sanding sandblasting grit on the lens. So now that I have my sandblasting finished, I'm going to use my polish on this the one side of the thigh plate that's shiny to get it to make it look like that Beskar steel look. All right, thigh plates are finished. I hope you guys enjoyed that video as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, this was a fun build. This has been a real fun build. I plan on making the whole entire Mandalorian kit. So if you wanna see me make every piece part, the soft parts, the leather parts, um, subscribe and stay tuned. I plan on making the whole thing um, or attempting it at least. Um, like and subscribe. Comment if you got any questions. I know I've been kind of lagging on answering all those questions. I've been trying a little harder. It was a little overwhelming with the amount of um, views and stuff like that I started getting with that helmet build. So this has been awesome. Thanks again, guys, for watching my videos and all the comments and all the likes, man. It has been awesome. So my name is Matt Schwartz, and I'm the Welding Geek. Stay tuned for more. Thanks again.